Okay. Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final panel of <laughs> Educating North Ants. Give us a wave, everybody. It's lovely to see you all. And thank you for having so many of you in the chat as well. Here we go. So welcome to Afternoon Tea with me, Carly Waterman. And me, Esther Gray. That's my sister. And this <laughs> live session marks the end of what is, I guess, the formal part of today's Educating North Ants conference. Obviously, there's more to come a little bit later. And Esther, what an event it's been. Truly fantastic. So many sessions today from North Ants educators, as well as blisteringly brilliant panellists in the two other panels from today. Okay, and oh my yeah. goodness, did you see the performance this morning from the Silhouette group? I hope you all saw it. It was unbelievable, wasn't it? Amazing. It really was. Okay. And what happens if people miss that performance, Carly? Well, actually, if you've missed the Silhouette performance or if you've missed any of the, any of the events throughout the day, any of the sessions, it's all okay. It's all okay because everything is viewable via the We Are In Beta event page and the Educating North Ants YouTube channel, and also viewable from the Teach North Ants website from next week next week as well. And it's available forever. So flexible viewing for everybody. So all good. Great. OK, so to close today's event, we're delighted to welcome our four fantastic panelists um, to talk about the future of Educating North Ants and what happens next in our county. Uh, that's right. So we're really, really pleased to have you all here um, and we are delighted to introduce them to you now. Um, so let's see. First of all, we have got Gemma Marks. Gemma gives away. Gemma is leading the newly designated <laughs> Northamptonshire Teaching School Hub at Brook Western Trust. We're also delighted to have Shayla Zafia with us today. She's the head of English at Northampton School for Girls and she's the BAME Ed representative for Northamptonshire. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Shayla. Uh, we also would really like to introduce you to Carrie Trail, who is the Strategic Manager for Schools in Northamptonshire County Council. Hi, Carrie. Hi. And finally, we are absolutely delighted to welcome Nefe Abike, who is a Year 11 student at Lodge Park Academy in Corby. We're so pleased, Nefe, that you're able to join us today. And we're really looking forward to you sort of sharing your experiences of education, um, with both kind of before lockdown, during lockdown, now afterwards as well. Um, and we're just looking forward to hearing you talk about what education means to you today. Yeah, hi. Thank you for joining us. Me. I have to say, very, very proud head teacher, because obviously I'm the head teacher of Lodge Park Academy. So Nefe, really, really delighted that you could join us today. And it's really important to us that we hear everybody's views um, and everybody's voices. And I think one of that, that's one of the things that's been really brilliant about today and also about educating North Ants generally two years ago and in all the events in between is that we do champion everybody's voices. We're non-partisan, we're non-political, and we make sure that every single phase of education in our County is represented. So I think we've got a brilliant panel here. But before we actually get on with the business of the day, there's some pretty important questions to ask, I'd say. What's that question, Esther? So the question is all about afternoon tea. So obviously, we know that with afternoon mm -hmm. tea, we always have scones. So how do we arrange our scones? That's a key question. Do we have jam and then the cream or do we have cream and then the jam? OK, so let's start with question. Gemma. Gemma, can you tell us what, what's your preference? Uh, jam, then cream. <laughs> Jam and yeah. then cream, brilliant. Jam and cream. cream. Brilliant. Nefe, okay. what would your preference be? I'll be honest and don't get mad at me for this, but I <laughs> haven't actually ever tried the scone. Oh my goodness. Oh you, my goodness. Are you kidding me, Nefe? Right, we need to write this, okay? So I'll see you on Tuesday, Nefe, okay, at our masterclass day at school, and I'm bringing you a scone, and you can try both jam, cream, cream, jam, okay? You've got that on record, Nefe. She's bringing you a scone. Wow. And Shane, <laughs> what about you? Definitely jam, then cream, and have it in bits so you can have different flavour jams. Oh, good like idea. I like that idea. Great mm, stuff. Yeah. And Carrie, what about you? What would your choice be? Jam, then cream, definitely. Oh, that's a bit of a flavour there, then great. Okay, Esther, what about you? I would, I'm with Carrie, jam, and then cream for me, all the way. I like the cream on the top. Okay. And you, Carly, what would you go for? Well, for me, it's all about the butter. You see, if you have butter, then you need to go scone, butter, jam, cream, okay? But if you don't have any butter, which, which wouldn't happen very often because you've always got butter, haven't you? Then actually then what happens is the cream takes the place of the butter. So you go scone, cream, jam. So really it all depends on the butter. So what do you think to that, Esther? <laughs> well, butter and cream just seems like a bit like overload to me, but there we are. Okay, if we're being good, super decadent. <laughs> right. Anyway, Brilliant. let's get on with today's panel. So really pleased to have you all here with us. So thank you so much for being here. Like I said, it's lovely to have this range of voices. So we're going to start with Gemma. Now we've asked you a range of questions and really the first question is, 
is what is it that we've learned from the pandemic that you can really view as a, an opportunity for the future? Because this this panel really is all about what's next. It's about the future. So Gemma, over to you. What have you learned in your role from the pandemic that could be an opportunity for the future? Well, um, I think before I get to um, the specifics, um, let me just say what an uplifting day it's been. Um, and if I think about the future of education, uh, generally speaking, um, then I think for the county, it's incredibly vibrant. vibrant. If we just take the voices um, that have contributed across the day from a range of sectors and a range of contexts, um, I'm just really blown away. So um, great to be here uh, and great to be speaking with you all. Um, and thank you for what has been a fantastic day already. Um, I think in terms of learnings from the pandemic and what that means for the future, um, I think like, uh, many people who have voiced today, um, what's really stood out is the resilience, the commitment, the adaptability um, of the educational community and that growing sense of togetherness um, with people increasingly working, um, not just more within schools, but beyond schools and across the sector. And I think that's been a hugely powerful positive um, as a result of the pandemic. Um, and something I think will um, hopefully we can harness to continue to grow into the future. Um, I think in terms of thinking particularly about professional development, um, which is the kind of main focus of the new Northamptonshire Teaching School Hub, um, I think we have to acknowledge the role that technology has played in really shifting this landscape and the ways in which we're engaging with CPD um, as teachers and as leaders. Um, and I think that you know, it's really democratised and opened up access to incredible quality voices um, and CPD. And the, the absolute professional generosity, I think, that so many people in the sector have shown um, in being willing to share what they do so freely and so willingly with one another um, has really enabled all of us to be enriched by that um, as way, in, in the ways in which we've engaged with it. So. I think that, you know, engaging with CPD um, has led people to be less dependent on the school offer um, mm -hmm. and much more able to um, be autonomous and fluid and self-directed um, and engage with it in an asynchronous way that works for them. I think that's really interesting. Thank you so much for that contribution, Gemma, because you're absolutely right about professional generosity. And actually, that's very apt for today as well, isn't it? Absolutely. And also this kind of agile way in which we're all kind of taking responsibility for our professional responsibility. It's not about the school offer anymore. It's about really all of us as professionals um, taking the route that we want to take through our career and, and taking responsibility for our learning. So that's a, thank you for that. I think what we'll do now, though, is we'll, we'll, we'll move on to Nefe. Esther? Yeah, absolutely. So Nefe, it'd be really good to hear from your perspective and from young people's perspective, you know, what opportunities are there for the future as we move on from the pandemic? Um, one thing I've seen during the pandemic and one thing I've learned from it is that we haven't actually leaned enough on technology and prioritised it for education. But obviously we have adapted, schools have adapted and people have learned from it. I personally haven't struggled with the pandemic on its own, but um, I do have peers that did struggle. So the best thing to do would be to continue adapting and using technology to improve learning. So can I just ask a follow-up question there, Nefe, then? So, so I think that's a really interesting point. And actually, it follows really well on from Gemma's point, doesn't it? So Gemma, you talked about the way in which technology was sort of democratising because actually we had to all be very agile. But interestingly, from a student's perspective, saying that we could all go a bit further. And I find this fascinating that we're all feeling like we've done a fantastic job, haven't we? Like all bigging up everything that we've done. Aren't we brilliant? But actually, from a student point of view, really, Nefe's saying that, Actually, there's more that we can do as a profession to make sure that we meet the needs of young people. Is that right, Nefe? Is that what you're trying to say? And is there, a, I mean, do you have an example of that, Nefe? Is what ways in which would you would you like to see technology developing further to support you? Um, one thing I've heard a lot is every 17 days a student has off, they drop one grade. And obviously, it might have taken schools two weeks to adapt to using things like Teams or I don't know what other schools would be using for online learning. 
So what but, you're saying is the sort of pace of change hasn't isn't necess hasn't necessarily been as fast as you might have needed it. But one other thing is that it could open up new windows for things such as making sure students who are off do not miss lessons because I understand that members of staff and teachers may not have time to revisit things they would have done another day and we can't afford to have lessons lost at this point. That's a really great point. Thank you. And I think mm. on that note, um, I think we'll also then we'll move on to Carrie now, because I know that you've got some thoughts about this, Carrie, haven't you, about the sort of agility of the system and really what we've learned from the pandemic that we can take through as an opportunity as well. But also like how we should what we should prioritise really over the next five years. Um, so, Carrie, can I ask you to pick up that point with a perhaps a particular focus on technology? Yeah, most definitely. So when we think about technology, when we look at other parts of the country and even other countries worldwide, they have embraced different types of technology due to the remoteness of these countries and of these places. But when we transfer that and have a look at how we can look and uh, widen access here, we haven't embraced technology um, wholesale. Um, it's not a mainstream idea and a mainstream offer. And I think technology can be used to overcome barriers um, to learning, such as transportation, financial costs, we are to try and mix learning with employment opportunities that young people might access. And I think where we see studies and research around the teenage brain fitting in um, using technology, the live stream platforms where you can watch a game, I think it's very important to embrace this type of technology in a planned approach um, and develop it in order to engage our young people moving forward. It's not for everybody, it should be used as a rule I think mm. most definitely now that we've had a go at it and now we've seen what it's been like, I think most definitely embrace it and take that forward as a priority. When we have young people not accessing education um, or when we think about sixth form education where we see fringe and minority subjects falling at the wayside, I think if especially multi-academy trusts are really well placed here, if they can look at systems where they can share teachers some of the learning can be done in a blended fashion, not all, in order to ensure the vibrancies of some of these minority subjects, because I do worry about the narrowing of the secondary curriculum, because it is expensive, and how funds are used in um, the pre-16 phase in order to alleviate the cost of post-16 in some of our schools. So I think technology most definitely to widen opportunities, widen participation for those who um, live remotely, for those fringe subjects and those potentially with mental health issues where they don't want to come in or they're struggling with coming in, how are we embracing this technology as a rule now rather than the exception? And I think most definitely agree with what Nephi had been saying. I think as a priority looking at that, but that's not the only priorities, but I think for me that that is one of the ones that's up there. It's Thank so you. possible, isn't it, to see solutions using technology and, and sort of seeing solutions that we've never seen before. And I think it's really important we continue in that vein. We mustn't go back to where we were before. I think that's a really important message, isn't it? Can I take us over to Shayla now then and, and, and just ask you, Shayla, what do you think are the priorities for North Ants educators in the next five years as we look to the future from where we are now? Um, <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, we need to start really listening to our students. We need to start listening to those young voices. What the pandemic has shown is that they have something real to say to us. And in my experience, I've had all of these voices around me that make up my sound collage of everyday life. And suddenly those voices have become amplified and young people are asking for change and they want us to lead the change with them. So let's listen to them and let's make sure that that change is happening, that they are getting uh, the education that they deserve and they are getting the diversity that they deserve um, and they are getting the recognition that they deserve and the representation. And that's been my my takeaway from this pandemic, particularly uh, with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement and also being part of South Asian Heritage Month, um, those it's those young voices that have been amplified. And I'm so proud to be able to be part of that and help raise the profile and actually really 
um, work with young people to move education forward. Uh, and technology is one of the ways, and as Nefe said, do we have to all have lessons at the same time? Does CPD have to, have to happen at the same time for everyone? And it's allowing us the flexibility to deliver, but also young people and us individuals as well to access what we want at the same time as well. So the flexibility of blended learning, as Carrie pointed out, has so much potential in bringing those voices to the foreground. I think so that's I think... so important. Sorry, Carly. No, go on. It's fine. <laughs> um, I was just going to say that student voice, I think, has been a real kind of thread throughout today, hasn't it? With lots of discussions about um, the importance of student voice. Um, and I, I just wanted to ask you, Shayla, you know, do, do you see really good practice going on around you in North Ants? Is, can you kind of highlight some really good work that's going on or are things that we can all be doing in our schools to make sure that we are privileging the student voice all around us? There's lots of, I mean, certainly at NSG, we are listening to student voice. Student voice has, particularly in terms of unity that we have at NSG, their voice is very strong in terms of um, highlighting differences in student experiences and working with that. Um, I know I've had some conversations with, with Carly in terms of what you want to do at Lodge Park, but also Wellingborough School are doing a lot of good work in amplifying and looking at diversity and representation. And they, what they are trying to put in place is something that we can borrow from and have in our schools as well for example training of staff that is being led by students which is for me amazing sounds great doesn't it so i think those the themes that are emerging then are there are um, the use of technology for us to be much more agile and also the privileging of children's voices or young people's voices in our own dialogue um, as, as educators um, and then added to that this sense of inclusion and diversity that actually what we're doing is we're listening to young people's voices and we're using technology in a way to bring everybody together so that everyone feels that they have a voice. So just going back to Gemma now, can I just ask you Gemma, as in your role and as, as director of the, the new teaching school hub, how what plans do you have to be able to perhaps draw on some of those themes and, and bring some of that to the county in the coming years? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yeah, so um, I should say the Northamptonshire Teaching School Hub um, is part of the new national infrastructure um, and will be going live in September. Um, and I think why, where it's really important for me is, is connecting into what I think has been a key theme of today um, about working collectively for the greater good of the sector across Northamptonshire um, and all schools and all phases and all the student population within it. Um, and I think that the, the teaching school hub can be um, a real opportunity um, to shape that landscape and mm. continue to empower teachers towards that increasingly more adept collaboration. Um, I'm really keen that the hub is able to grow an equity of access to the very best knowledge, the very best expertise and evidence that will have the greatest impact on improving outcomes ultimately in schools. Um, and you know where we can sort of begin to think and, and listen to schools and listen to teachers and leaders and understand where perhaps some of those barriers might have been previously mm -hmm. to engaging mm -hmm. in professional learning communities um, and working together to to pull those down so that genuinely every teacher in every school um, is able to access um, the knowledge they need to have the greatest impact possible because I know that the sector is passionate um, about meeting Absolutely. this community um, and I know that there's a real need that we do that. Yeah and I think that's that's the, this is the sort of theme I, I really hoped would come out of this discussion and I think it really has is that we're all being very hopeful and optimistic about the future and I think that sort of leads us on really to our sort of final question where we're going to ask all of you to to tell us what your hopes are for for the future um, so it's not just about the lessons learned, but it's also about really what do, what can we foresee in five years time? What will the landscape be like? And we obviously want to look at it from the point of view of a young person, from Nefe's point of view, but also perhaps from the point of view of our county. And I'm looking at Carrie here thinking that, you know, we are about to just be, we're on the verge, aren't we, of, of moving to two unitary authorities, the North Northamptonshire Council and the West Northamptonshire Council. And so, so I'm thinking about that kind of context as well. So I think, first of all, I could have come to you, Carrie, is that okay? And just ask you what your thoughts are about this, because just to put it into context that two years ago when we did our first Educating North Ants um, conference one of the one of the reasons why we did that was because there was some trepidation um, amongst ed educators about this 
prospect of, of, of the, uh, you know, the authority going into two. Um, and we, we weren't sure that what that was going to look like. And we had questions about effectiveness, of course. And, and we really wanted to have our voices heard. And, our, and what we've done as a, as a community of educators is we have had our voices heard. And now we're at the point where we are about to split into the two unitary authorities. And actually, I think we're all feeling a lot more hopeful than we were two years ago. So from your point of view, as strategic manager for schools, I mean, what a job. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about what we can look forward to in the future, Carrie. Um, thank you for you know the question. It's we are looking forward to uh, unitary splits on the first of April. It is a really exciting time for both uh, councils. I think never before has there been such a a drive to create a family feeling that the local authority, both local authorities, are work across West Northamptonshire and North Northamptonshire. And all of the officers within the learning and education skills team have that drive to work with schools. Gone are the days where it was, or oh, the local authority says X, Y, and Z, we don't want to work like that. And gone are the days where we don't really have a strong view on anything. What we want is to get out there, have our voices heard with you. What are, and listen, what are the schools saying? What are your views? And how as a local authority can we best represent the children, the young people, and the families that we serve, because obviously we're there on behalf of the children and the young people to make sure that they are receiving the best quality education that they can, and how we play our role in that, and how we can take that forward, you know, is important. Yeah, most definitely, we will be listening. We will be wanting to work with you all. Uh, we'll be going through a period of consultation in order to build up strategies and ideas We'll be looking to set up working parties with not just head teachers, but with all leaders um, across all phases in order to gather these ideas and bring everybody together because you know we are all stakeholders in this together. So it's going to look very different and there is that commitment, absolute commitment to engagement. So moving forward, so definitely a new world from the 1st of April. Well, you know, that's really, really encouraging to hear. And we're so grateful to have your representation here today as well, because actually that's definitely what educators want as well. We really just want to all work together um, to create that kind of future for our young people. So thank you, Carrie. Um, can we move on to Nefe now then? Nefe, uh, same sort of question to you, really. Not, not a technical one about the unitary authorities, <laughs> but a question about what are your hopes? You know, here you are, you're in year 11. Um, you've got this crazy situation with the uh, exam results this year, which is, you know, an odd situation to be in. What are your hopes for the future, um, Nefe, in terms of how you and other young people can be catered for here in Northamptonshire? Honestly, I'm just hoping that the pandemic hasn't taken as big a hit on our futures as it seems to have because it's going to seem like we got less of an education than the years before us and the years after us. But the most I can really say is that I hope the years to follow have a more flexible way of learning than we did because it's the rigidity of education that caused such a big hit to it. If, if something else were implemented, and I'm not sure exactly what it could be yet, but if something else were implemented, we might just have been able to keep on working as if nothing had happened. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I mean, what a wise thing to say, um, that the rigidity of, of education was in a sense the thing that's potentially, you know, held you back or, or been a detriment to you. And actually what you're saying is that your hope for the future, I think, is that that education can be more flexible and more agile for, for young people in the future. And just personally, Nefe, what are you what are you personally hoping for in the next couple of years? What are your plans? What do you want to do and be? I'm hoping to go into sixth form, then uni. I don't really want to look for employment until all of this is blown over, until I'm out of school, get the best grades I can, and hopefully go into a computer engineering job. And can I just quickly say thank you to all my teachers who've helped me through everything we've had to go through, managing their own lives and helping me with mine. Miss Corbley should be here, Mr. Sloan is here, Mr. Keith is here. So just 
thank you to them for helping me throughout everything. That's wonderful. Thanks. A great message. Thank you, Nefe. I'm sure they'll be really pleased to hear you say that. Um, and Shayla, coming to you then. So obviously you've talked a lot about diversity already in what you've said. What are your hopes in terms of trying to make the county's schools um, more of a sort of a diverse place in the future? Do you? Do, what are your plans and your hopes for us? Okay, well, my hope is, I guess, it's as simple as it is complex, mm. in that mm. I want to be able to see a greater number of teachers applying uh, to work in Northamptonshire schools. We have, in terms of percentages, uh, we're, we're below national averages in terms of black and Asian teachers working in our mm. schools, and I want to be able to promote that. But equally, I want our students to want to become teachers and uh, starting this work has made me realise that we have to do grass grassroots level work. Why is it that our young people are not wanting to go into education and really looking at that and ensuring our students in our schools right now think um, about becoming teachers and want to become teachers and be the representation they want to see. And that's got to be mm -hmm. coupled with looking at our curriculum de uh, and diversifying our curriculum as well and making all voices valid. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's it. It's what we all want to do, isn't it? But making all of those voices valid is something we all have to continue to work at, isn't it? And it's not something we should be complacent about. And I think going back to today, it's also one of the things that I'm so proud of um, that we've achieved with Educating North Ants is about giving that voice to everybody. So I think just one final comment from Gemma, just to round us up there, Gemma, just, and I know you talked a little bit about how the hub, uh, the teaching hub will support um, professional development in the future. But what about you personally over the next couple of years? What do you hope for for Northamptonshire education? Um, I just I think that um, there is there is so much optimism um, in the community and I really hope that we harness that um, and I hope that on the back of that that what we develop is a real expertise across the sector in in learning to meet the needs um, of of the students that, that really need it most so um, you know real deep expertise around meeting the needs of disadvantaged um, around students with SEND um, and all the students that feel that for the last year, their education has has faltered, um, mm -hmm. and rebuilding that confidence for them moving forward. Um, so, yeah, optimistic for the future, ultimately. Optimistic for the future. Well, on yeah. that perfect note, um, Gemma, about optimism for the future, we would like to wrap up our conversations as part of this panel and thank you all. So thank you to Carrie, Shayla, Gemma, Gemma and Nefe for all, I mean, fantastic contributions, such wise words. Um, I mean, so much that I kind of, I feel like I, need, I haven't been able to absorb it all. I want to watch again later and pick up some of the threads of the things that you've said and, and continue to have these conversations with you. Um, so thank you so much for being part of this panel today. And um, if anybody watching wants to engage with any of our panelists, you can do that, of course, in the chat, which I think some of you are doing now. And you can also do that in the comment thread in the community page, which is underneath this event, uh, which we will um, we will direct you to at the end of this event. Esther. OK, so today has been absolutely brilliant, as we know. We've all learned a great deal. Um, but it's obviously all about what happens next. And it's about how we apply that learning in our different contexts that's so important. And obviously, we are working on a food theme today. So we want to hear from everybody about their takeaways from today, from today's event. Uh, so your takeaway could be from one of the sessions that you've attended. Um, it could be to do with a connection that you've made with a person. Um, you could have multiple takeaways from today. That's absolutely fine. But we really do want to hear from you. We want to hear about your takeaways from today. So we're dropping, we're dropping the link into the chat right now. I believe. Just done yeah, it. There it. Just is. done it. Perfect. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> um, and you can also find the takeaway section in the post event part of the agenda as well. We're really keen to hear from you and we want to keep the conversation going today and beyond. And it's also really, really, isn't it, about a commitment to action. So I think there's yeah. lots of us have felt very inspired today. Um, and, and often one of the limitations of professional development is that you feel inspired um, and then you don't do anything. So we really mm -hmm. want a commitment to action. So who are you going to connect with? Who are you going to collaborate with? What things are you going to take forward? And that's what we'd like you to share with us by following that link that I've just put into the chat for your takeaways. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to talk about the future of, of, of us, the future of educating North Ants. So um, we are a grassroots, entirely voluntary, non-funded organisation of, of educators. What we believe in is collaboration and we have always wanted to champion the voices of teachers, parents and students in this county. It's important to remember that we're not a school, 
we're not a mat, we're not a charity, we're not a business. We, we like to call ourselves the glue that helps educators to join up and connect. We're completely non-partisan, non-political. We have no ideology and all we believe in is inclusion and collaboration. That's why we use the hashtags everyone's welcome and be part of the conversation and so do you want to be part of that conversation yes then please get involved and here's how you can email us at educatingoffense at gmail.com you could also dm us on twitter great to see so many people using the chat today continue to do that throughout the rest of the afternoon and then when you connect with us you could tell us what events uh, might you like to run in northamptonshire um how will you want to make a difference by using the educating north Ants platform because educating north Ants doesn't belong to me it doesn't belong to esther or any of the people who you've seen involved today it belongs to all of us every single one of us as educators in the county and we'd really love to hear from you um so I think there's something, there's something really important happening later. <laughs> uh, something happening, Esther, isn't there? Yeah, I think something. about seven o'clock tonight. Something really important is happening. Okay. Tell me about it, because I've forgotten. I can't remember. Is it something exciting? Is it something where we get our glad rags on? Is that right? Oh, I think it is. Isn't it? <laughs> Disco. It's the event that you've all been waiting for. It is happening tonight at seven o'clock. Yes. This is a CPD event with a disco. I mean, does it get any better than that? So, and it is, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. It is a disco with DJs Jay and Chris. So, I can't wait. It's going to be epic. Please join us at seven o'clock. Great yeah. way to so end. It's seven o'clock. Get your glad rags on. I've got my disco light here. Shall I just turn it on? Hang on one second. I'm going to just turn it on just so you can see it. Okay, look. <laughs> got my disco light ready, Jay. £20 off Amazon. What a bargain. So we're Brilliant. going to be dancing in the kitchen later. So that's going to be loads, loads and loads of fun. I'll turn that back off. So, but before that, what we want to do now is wrap up our whole event. And we need to say some thank yous. The first thing we need to say is thank you so much to everybody who has presented today. Over 80 presentations and every single person gave their time completely for free voluntarily. And the quality of the presentations today, I'm sure you'll agree, have been absolutely fantastic. We've said already that you can continue to watch them forever and ever. And thank goodness, because there's such an array of expertise and quality there. So thank you so much. I mean, we couldn't possibly say all of your names here because we'll be here all night. But thank you, all of you who have contributed to Educating North Ants today. Um, but we've also got a couple of other names that we need to mention. So Esther. So we'll start with Ryan Story. Thank you so much, Ryan. And to Wendy Piermain. Thank you, Wendy. Um, to Anna Carter for all your help you've done, given throughout the conference. Shirley Thomas, thank you so much for putting everything on Facebook for us. And Chris and Kelly Bateman, absolutely amazing support from Chris throughout. And the cookies absolutely. from Kelly look amazing this afternoon as well. <laughs> <laughs> and also a big, big thank you to Lee Walmerans and the incredible young people at Silhouette Youth Theatre. How amazing are they? Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the team from We Are In Beta, oh my goodness, when we thought about doing this event without you, what were we thinking? <laughs> what were we thinking? How could we have possibly done it without Niall, Francis, Sars and Jay? Thank you so much to the We Are In Beta team. And if anybody wants to run an event online, speak to Head absolutely. of Helpfulness, Francis, that We Are In Beta, yeah. He is amazing, absolutely brilliant. Um, of course, the EN Steering Group. So that includes... Chris. Jay. Jenny. Tom. Esther. <laughs> and Carly. <laughs> also, we need to say a massive, massive thank you to Toby Davenport. Oh, oh my goodness, goodness what a legend. Thank you so much for getting all of those uploads done for us. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Gavin Taylor. And also thank you to all of our sponsors. Oxford University Press. Ambition Institute. And Teach North Ants. And it's because of their generosity that everybody was able to access all of this for free. So there we go. That is it. It is time to say goodbye. Um, and, you know, we want you to make sure that you come along to the disco tonight. So make sure you all get dressed up. Get yourself a cocktail or a tipple of your fancy. Not you, Nefe. No, no drinking. <laughs> but I, um, and make sure... Yeah, get your get lights down, get into the kitchen, dancing. get your disco lights ready and dance the night away with the Educating North Ants Disco with Chris and Jay. And all you need to do is just click the link on the agenda at seven o'clock and then the fun will begin. So thank you very much, everybody. Well done, Esther. Thank, thank you. you to you too. Thank you, Carly. Um, and everybody have a good evening. Take care. Thank Take you, everybody. Care. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you so much.